for the hardest hitting show in talk radio. The true progressive voice since 2012. This is South Pause. And welcome to South Paws on the Pacifica Radio Network. We are the leaders of the revolution. My name is Darren Gibson, and I'm your co-host. Yeah, and my name is Jack Prince, your fellow co-host. We have a world full of politics, literally topics galore today. And we're going to talk about world politics as part of it. Trump and Ukraine and Turkey and the Kurds and quid pro quo. We're going to go through the whole list today. Before we get to that... A reminder that you can follow us on social media by going to facebook.com forward slash Southpaws Radio Show. You can follow us on Twitter at Southpaws Radio. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com forward slash Southpaws Radio. We would appreciate that so we can get the bills paid around here. Also, you can hear the show anytime you like at spreaker.com. Do a search for Southpaws there. You can go to the iTunes store and search for us under podcast. Just find our logo and you found us. I fail to mention this every week, but all of our Spreaker episodes that we put up also automatically go to our Twitter account and to our YouTube page. So do a search for South Paws Radio under YouTube and you'll find those episodes there as well. And, of course, you can listen to us on Pacifica stations around the country, including KCEI-FM Taos, New Mexico, KZGM Kabul, Missouri, KOWA Olympia, Washington downloaded last week's show. Thank you for that. And, of course, Global Community Radio Channel 1. We're on every Monday night at 9 p.m. right after Democracy Now! So make sure you check us out there as well. Before we get started... I want to uh, pass along our condolences to Brad Friedman, host of the Bradcast and Green News Report. He took some time off about a month ago, and he said there was a family emergency and kind of left it at that. We had no idea how bad the family emergency was. Uh, Brad's dad passed away. Uh, Mr. Friedman was 80 years old. From all accounts, from what I've read on uh, Brad's blog, just a tremendous guy, and for him to raise a son the way that he has with Brad and the man that Brad is, he must have been a hell of a great dad. So, Brad, we love you. Anything that you need from us, just ask. We're we're here for you, buddy. All right. Let's go into this week's show, and let's get into the media before we get into Trump here because this was posted to Twitter. This is by Samuel D. Finkelstein II. Here's what he posted to Twitter. NBC took one of Bernie's best quotes from the debate and attributed it to Warren. Totally shameless. And he has a screenshot of this from NBC News. And here's what it says. Blasting a corrupt and unfair system. I get a little bit tired, I must say, of people defending a system which is dysfunctional, which is cruel, 87 million uninsured, 30,000 people dying every single year, Warren said in response to attacks on her support for a single-payer health care system. New York Magazine also attributed the quote to her, so did Boston.com. However, she didn't say it, Bernie did. Here's the audio, folks, from the debate. A little bit tired, I must say. Are people defending a system which is dysfunctional, which is cruel? 87 million uninsured, 30,000 people dying every single year, 500,000 people going bankrupt? For what reason? They came down with cancer. I will tell you what the issue is here. The issue is whether the Democratic Party has the guts to stand up to the healthcare industry, which made $100 billion in profit, whether we have the guts to stand up to the corrupt, price-fixing pharmaceutical industry, which is charging us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. And if we don't have the guts to do that, if all we can do is take their money, 
We should be ashamed of ourselves. Absolutely. And so they attributed that to Elizabeth Warren when it was actually Bernie, as we just played here. Jack, why do you think they did this? Is this to confuse voters who may not have watched the debates? First of all, it was so powerful and succinct. Anybody should recognize it from uh, the mouth of Bernie Sanders. But to answer your question, this isn't new. I'm not surprised at all. Her whole mode of operandi has been to steal his platform, going back months and months. Now it's down to actual quotes. The only thing different here is this is a short turnaround in time. I mean, people could have seen the debate. They could have seen the statement and re- realized that's not uh, Warren. But here's, the, here's our problem. Here is our worry. Warren has gotten the support of the establishment. Warren has gotten the support of the media. And when you're fighting these, uh, these snakes, it's, it's a tough road to hold. You're going to see more of this. Uh, they got caught red-handed. We're going to talk about it right now. But will it reverse the tendency? I'm afraid not. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, too. They fixed the article on their website 24 hours later. They removed the quote entirely. They didn't attribute it to Bernie. They just pulled that quote entirely out, then put a quote that Elizabeth Warren actually said. So for the first 24 hours, the people have seen the story with the same headline, the same billboard, the whole nine yards. They thought Elizabeth Warren said what Bernie actually said. I'll just call it what it is. It's plain lying from the corporate-owned mainstream media because they are scared to death that if Bernie gets in office, he is going to get rid of all of these multinational corporations. He's going to bust them up. I hope American voters are keen enough to realize you're looking at the whole problem in this incident. You're Mm -hmm. looking at the problem with America. You're looking at the problem with democracy. You're looking at the problem with the Democratic Party in that the corporate media and the corporate objective uh, control is taking over our political process. Has Bernie not said this over and over again? Mm -hmm. They got caught with the cookie in their hand here, folks. Figure it out. Yeah. Somebody else got caught with the cookie in their hand (laughs) is Donald Trump, obviously. (laughs) It's got to be a small cookie. Get into that. Last night, (laughs) Donald Trump's acting chief of staff, Mulvaney, you, I got to read this. I have this. This is from Huffington Post by Carla Herreria. This is dated on Thursday, October 17th. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney admitted on Thursday that Donald Trump withheld foreign aid in order to get Ukraine's help in the U.S. election. Mulvaney responded when ABC News reporter John Carl pointed out that withholding funding from Ukraine unless the investigation into the Democrat server happens is a quid pro quo. Here's how Mulvaney responded. Quote, we do that all the time with foreign policy. End of quote. What? Let me say that again. (laughs) Quote, we do that all the time with foreign policy. End of quote. He added later, quote, get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. That is going to happen. Elections have consequences, end of quote. So you've got the acting chief of staff admitting to a crime on national television. Darren, you know, when they make Trump's library, (laughs) when they actually go to a New Jersey landfill site and... (laughs) Push a square, a square of clear ground around the garbage for his library. It'll it'll be Over either Turkey doorway. or Russia, I'm afraid. Yeah, right. <laughs> the mafia. We're, we're it'd be behind some uh, Italian restaurant in uh, Mafia, New Jersey. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> there will be the the gateway entrance with the we do it all the time pro quid. Either that, yeah. or how about the letter that he wrote to the Turkish leader? Oh, that we'll, should be the we'll, first page when we'll, you go in the library. We'll get it be? to that. We'll get to that in just a little <laughs> bit here. Let me continue. Foreign policy negotiations often demand trading a move by one country with a policy changed by the other. President John F. Kennedy resolved the Cuban Missile Crisis with the Soviet Union by agreeing to remove U.S. nuclear missiles from Turkey in exchange for the USSR pulling its nuclear missiles from Cuba. Funny, we're going to talk about Turkey here in just a little bit. (laughs) What makes Trump's exchange different is that the favor he asked of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky 
was a personal political benefit. The insertion of personal gain is what makes it corrupt. Mulvaney claimed that the Trump administration was withholding aid from Ukraine to coerce the country into investigating a supposed Democratic National Committee email server and alleged corruption in the 2016 election. Not former Vice President Joe Biden, one of Trump's political rivals headed into 2020. Mulvaney's claim is incomplete and misleading. Trump brought up both the DNC server and Biden in his call with Ukraine's president. When Carl from ABC News asked why the U.S. stopped the aid, Mulvaney said that Trump thought it was unfair that the European Union wasn't doing more to help Ukraine. <laughs> Jeez. Then Mulvaney referenced a debunked conspiracy theory that claims the DNC's physical server is missing in a cover-up and that CrowdStrike, a private cybersecurity company hired to investigate Russia's hack of the DNC servers, is framing Russia for election interference. Mulvaney told the reporter, quote, Did he, meaning Trump, also mention to me in the past the corruption that related to the DNC server? Absolutely, no question about that. But that's it, and that's why we hung up the money. End of quote. As the Daily Beast reported last year, the DNC's so-called server is actually a system of 140 servers and none of the DNC's machines are missing. Speaking to reporters, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska denounced efforts to hold up foreign aid for political reasons. In response to questions about Mulvaney's press conference, Murkowski said, quote, You don't hold up foreign aid that we had previously appropriated for a political initiative. End of quote. Hours after the news conference, Mulvaney walked back his admission that the U.S. withheld Ukrainian aid for political gain. In a lengthy statement, he said the opposite of his earlier remarks. Quote, there was absolutely no quid pro quo between Ukrainian military aid and any investigation into the 2016 election. End of quote. Mulvaney also wrongly blamed the media for misconstruing and putting a spin on the comments he made during the news conference, which was televised and streamed live to the public. (laughs) It's the media's fault, Jack. (laughs) This is unbelievable. It's hard to keep up, Darren. Next, Mulvaney will admit that it was the Trump White House that put out the fake video of Trump shooting people from the media. You know, the video that we talked about before we got on the air today. Well, you know, I, I've said this before the show, and I, I think it's somewhat of an accurate metaphor. We as citizens and people who hold to some remembrance of political sanity are in a, a front seat of a, of a car being driven by a drunk man. And we're every day seeing the speedometer go up. We have no protection. We can't get to him. Seemingly, we can't. We can't get our hands on the wheels. We see curves ahead. We see uh, threats and problems ahead as we increase in velocity of insanity. It's unsettling, to say the, the least. I don't know what the psychological impact is or if it's been monitored on people, uh, on just people who try to have some semblance of balance in their life. And this guy cuts their throats every morning. Mm-hmm. I, I have, have friends who tell me they don't listen to the news. They can't listen to the news. They can't watch the news. If they did, they hear that the so-called G7 summit that's planned here in the future, Trump has already corralled that to go into his property down in Florida Mm -hmm. for how many millions of dollars of profit? Mm -hmm. Can can we stand by uh, and watch it and fight it, or do we do what our neighbors are doing, which is tune into a rerun or NFL football? You can't keep up with this guy mentally. You can't handle it. And I think it's done by design. There was a story yeah. earlier this week on Inside Edition where they were talking about why does Trump do his press conferences in front of Marine One, the helicopter, because it's worrying. You can hear the blades going, and he does it on purpose so that he can say, I didn't hear the question properly. What? What would you say? Have you seen the hearing aid commercial, Jack, where the father and son are working on some chairs in the wood shop and the son says i love you dad and the father goes what son says i love you what (laughs) and then after the guy gets the hearing aids the the son says i love you dad the dad says what the son says i said i love you and the dad says i heard you the first time i just wanted to hear it again (laughs) yeah Yeah. that's what we got with trump here 
What? I just wanted to hear you say it again. <laughs> <laughs>